Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is The Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Today, we're gonna to be discussing how I was able to change careers completely to become a data analyst. And I think that this is a really good topic because I get asked this question all the time. It's from people who are teachers or nurses or accountants who want to pivot their careers or completely change their careers to become a data analyst. And you know, they ask me for tips and they ask me for advice on what they should do. And so I thought that you know this is a good time, a good place to really go in depth into how I was able to make that change, the things that I did, the time frames. And so hopefully along this, uh, in this video, you're able to pick up some tips or some things that you can apply to your own journey to becoming a data analyst. Uh, you know, we're gonna start at the very, very beginning, back in 19, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're gonna start, you know, right after I graduated college and we're gonna talk about the first, um, the degree that I had, the first job that I had, and talk about how I progressed all the way up to the job that I have now. And so I hope that is helpful. I hope that this is gonna be a good, useful video that you know people can actually learn something from and apply to their own journeys and, and careers as well. So let's start at the very uh, beginning of my um, you know career, which was I have a degree in recreational therapy. If you don't know what that is, don't be surprised. I had no idea what it was when I first got into college. Um, you know, I wanted to go into occupational therapy and then potentially physical therapy. Um, you know, I really liked working with people. And so that's the kind of degree that I got. And recreational therapy was a stepping stone to get uh, to the, the master's degree in occupational therapy where I went to school. That was kind of um, a, a natural stepping stone. And so that's why I got that degree. So I moved to Dallas, Texas uh, right after college for an internship. Um, and then I, I had plans to work a little bit and then get into a master's program. So, you know, just to set the stage, that's kind of where I was. And so I get here, I'm doing my internship, and, uh, you know, lo and behold, I decide to, you know, go out and I meet a girl. And that's kind of how this story completely pivots um, because I had this whole idea of what I wanted to do with my life and my career. And in that single moment of, of meeting my now wife, um, my whole life changed. And so I, I basically threw everything that I had planned out the window. I married her um, and you know we uh, started figuring out how I was going to earn money, right? Because I had at that time basically no income um, and I just started applying to completely random jobs, right? I was, I was applying for just jobs that I was just, please hire me. I just wanna make any money so I can stay here. I don't have to move back to North Carolina. Um, I eventually got a job at a nonprofit as kind of like a caretaker. I think uh, it was called like um, a re not a resident advocate, something like that. It, I believe that there's an acronym called RA. And basically, what I did was I was helping take care of people who um, were in our shelter. It was an abuse shelter, so people, uh, primarily women and men, who had been abused in relationships, could come there, and I would help take care of them. I would cook them food. I would, um, you know basically do paperwork and lots of other things just to make sure that they were taken care of. So that was the very first real job that I had out of college. Um, and so I'm working there for like six months. I'm getting to know a lot of the people who worked at the nonprofit. You know, I'm making, I'm building relationships even though I'm in basically the lowest position at the entire nonprofit. And and so, you know, I'm building relationships, I'm getting to know people. And a, uh, a job comes up, which was a data collection specialist and an analyst. Now, my girlfriend at the time, my now wife, said, hey, you should apply for that job. And I was like, I don't know what that means at all. I have no idea what any of those words are. I, I don't, I, I guess I kind of know what data is, have no idea what this job would entail. But I looked at the job description and, um, you know, it was basically just working in Excel. It was collecting numbers from different departments and putting them together and it seemed really easy. So, uh, you know, I completely reformatted my resume, I applied, and lo and behold, I was the only applicant and I got the job. And so this is where the whole story of how I became who I am today, career-wise, uh, that's how it all happened. It was me desperately needing more money because I wanted to marry this girl, um, and she kind of pushed me to just apply even though I thought there was no way I was gonna get this job. Um, and so, you know, at that time, I really had no career aspirations. I kind of had put that off to the side to push down the road maybe three to five years. I had no idea, really. 
um, you know, I, I kind of, I would portray myself as kind of like um, Steve Carell and 40-Year-Old Virgin where he just has no career plans. He doesn't really have anything going for him. He plays video games all the time. That was basically me, except I had a girlfriend um, and, and that's about it. And I kind of, it was serious. And so um, that's really the only difference. You know, we, it was very much, very much the same. Um, and so I took that job and then for the next six months, I'm learning um, all about uh, Excel, data collection, um, submitting grants, um, submitting the data for the grants so that we get money for our actual um, organization to run. And I'm learning all about these things. And we decide as a company to get a new database um, to start you know, collecting the data better because we had a SQL server, which I found out basically when I was leaving. I had no idea we even had SQL Server, to be honest, and I didn't know, I didn't even know what SQL was, right? Uh, the funny part was, is as we were implementing the new uh, database, which was Salesforce, which I'm sure a lot of people are aware of, the, guy, the consultant that we had hired to basically teach me how to implement and use, uh, he had asked me, he's like, oh, well, you're the data guy, I'm guessing you guys use SQL, and I said, I was like, what is SQL? And it was like, it was, it was, he basically like, it was like he face palmed himself. He just was like, like, what on earth are you talking about? How do you not know what SQL is? So that very night I go home, I start looking at what SQL is. I still don't really understand it, but I decide to look up um, like a free course. I think on like Khan Academy or something like that. And just start learning kind of what a database is, um, how it works, what SQL is, how to, how you kind of pull data. I didn't really understand that. Um, and that is the first time I learned what SQL was. It was six months into my data collection specialist and analyst job. And that completely changed all my aspirations that I had, right? It was this guy just mentioning what SQL was. So, um, you know, I start doing a ton of research on SQL, what it is, what it's marketable for, what kind of jobs you can get with it. Because I just, for whatever reason, really liked it. I don't even remember why I liked it so much, but I became almost obsessed with it. I was working on it, excuse me, I would say almost every single night, maybe for three to four hours. I just became, I genuinely did become obsessed. Um, and and my, my wife remembers like, I would just be up late at night until like 1 a.m. every single night, just building databases, um, you know, building things out, trying to understand it, looking at websites, watching YouTube videos. Um, you know, I went through a very, very big phase where I was almost obsessed with learning about data analytics. Um, that was my future. I had kind of decided in that moment, I was like, I need to get a job as a data analyst. So, you know, I'm in that job for six months. I started learning about it. Over the next two or three months, um, things start going downhill in that job. Uh, the people I'm working with start to change, um, starts to get a little bit toxic, I would even say. And um, you know, I'm talking to my wife about this and she's like, you know, we, you know, you should try to find another job, to be honest. She's like, you need to find another job. Um, and you know, there wasn't many options out there for me. I had a degree in recreational therapy. I didn't have many skills. Uh, but you know, I was able to, over the course of the about two months, three months, really feel like I had gotten this whole sequel thing down. And so, um, you know, I, I decided to reformat my resume. I really revamped it. I, I didn't even have a portfolio. What I did was is I actually created basically a one sheet or it was a, it was a two sheet with just SQL scripts on there. So it was SQL scripts and I remember one of them specifically was um, taking a phone number, like it was phone numbers that were in different, um, uh, different formats and I used uh, regular expression in SQL to standardize all of them. That was one of my scripts, right? So, so kind of simple stuff but you know that was all I knew. All I knew was SQL. Um, and so I was really banking on the fact that I knew SQL because I had no other skills. I didn't know any data visualization. Uh, I didn't know any Python. I didn't have really any domain knowledge or understanding of how the process worked at all. And so I felt, looking back, I, I basically knew nothing. I knew SQL and that's about it. Um, and I didn't even know how to use it in a production environment. I didn't understand how to use it in a team or work with it in a team. I just knew the syntax, right? So that's kind of where I was. Um, and, and, and my job starts taking a really big downhill turn and I'm like, I need to find another job. I cannot stay here longer. Um, and so I start applying and applying and applying. I probably applied to 
hundreds. Uh, I'm talking like probably two to 300 jobs on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, um, Indeed, anything that was like entry level, I was applying for it. And so, uh, give me one sec. And so I was applying for it. And I finally got messaged from this guy on um, LinkedIn. And he was like, hey, I'm a recruiter in the Dallas area. You know, uh, I, I so it shows on your LinkedIn profile that you are looking for a job as a data analyst. Let's connect. Let, let you know, give me a call. So, um, once I found out that recruiters were a thing, which again, I don't come from the tech world. I don't come from really any kind of uh, field where recruiters are needed. So I didn't know how to work with a recruiter. So I just kind of called him, told him what I wanted, and he walked me through the entire process of how I'm gonna, you know, work with my resume, how I'm going to, um, you know, get in contact with employers, how this whole process works, and it was awesome, right? He he basically told me that they're gonna help me find a job, and all my dreams are gonna come true, um, which was everything I wanted to hear. But genuinely, I worked with about five or six recruiters and he was the first one who reached out to me. Um, and he was the first one I got, I accepted my next job with. Um, but I'm working with the recruiters and you know, I, I'm basically telling them like, look, the data collection specialist is mostly Excel. I have some SQL experience. That's real. I'm trying to get a job that's just SQL. Um, and I express that to them very honestly because I don't want to get into a job where I have to know like Python or data visualization because I don't know it at all. So um, I'm applying to a few different jobs. I get, I do get a few phone interviews, but these, the 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 phone interviews were so beyond anything that I knew, and they were offering a lot of money, right? They were offering like eighty thousand, ninety thousand dollars and they were expecting like machine learning and things that I didn't even know existed basically. And so, uh, you know, I kept turning them down because I was, you know, they, they weren't jobs that I was going to get. And if I got it, I would just get fired right away because I was not intelligent enough or, or I didn't have enough experience to understand it. So I finally got in contact with a, um, a healthcare analytics company. And this healthcare analytics company was very new, small, small company, under like 50 people. Uh, and I have a healthcare background. And so I was really able to leverage that and say, you know, I actually used to use EHRs. I know how they work. Um, you know, I know SQL, I know Excel. This would be a good fit for me. And so I got the, the phone interview. That went really well. Got the in-person interview. That kind of didn't go so great, to be honest. Um, the boss that uh, I ended up having, he was the, the hiring person in the interview. And I remember, you know, he asked me some really simple questions that now looking back, I 100% should have known and been prepared for, but I wasn't. It was on like joins and, um, you know, creating views, things that I absolutely 100% should have known, uh, but I didn't. And so I, I feel really stupid looking back because I really should have been pre more prepared. Um, I just didn't know what I even needed to know. I didn't even know that I needed to know about joins uh, in an interview. Didn't even think that, a I didn't even know what a technical question was. And that's, that's you know, let me look. That's four years ago, right? So that's not that long ago. Um, so, you know, the interview goes okay, but they end up offering me the job. And I think what, what they told me later on, you know, I had been at the job for six months, seven months. They did tell me, um, you know, they talked about me and they basically said that I had just a really good attitude. I was very outspoken that they, that I seemed like someone they wanted to work with. And although I didn't, I didn't necessarily have all the technical experience that I, I needed, I had a huge drive, um, and they could tell that I was someone who's going to pick it up quickly and really push myself and be a good employee. So that's what they told me, and I and I I agree. In my interview, that's how I kind of tried to portray myself, which was I don't know a lot, but man, I'm going to work super hard if you hire me. And so please hire me because I need I need um, I want to get out of my current job. I didn't say that in my interview, but I wanted to get out of my current job so that I could get uh, this new job. And, you know, they gave me the job and I'm working in there and I think that was one of the best jobs that I could have possibly gotten at the time because it was, uh, it started off very simple, a lot of Excel work, very basic SQL work. And I had my boss who was, I think the director of, ooh, I can't remember his title, um, but he was a huge mentor to me. Um, and he really took me under my wing, under his wing 
and he taught me SQL. He taught me a lot of really advanced things in Excel. And these are things that inevitably, uh, not inevitably, but eventually became huge for me to know, became extremely important. And I didn't even know, I didn't know these things. And so he just really, I want to say he took me under his wing, but he really babied me at the beginning of my job for the first like month. Um, and I picked it up super quickly because once I realized they used SQL Server, I went home and that night, um, you know, once I learned I got the job, starting studying studying everything about SQL Server, like every single thing I could find. I took, I by the time in two weeks when I got my new job, I had already taken like four courses um, on SQL Server. And so once I got into it, I was a little bit comfortable, but I was still very novice, um, very much beginner level. And so... I stayed at that job for a whole year. Um, and I say a whole year because I had no intention of leaving that job. In fact, they had talked about promoting me because I, I really had picked it up so fast that, uh, and, and I'm not trying to brag in any way. I, they, this is just what they, tell, they told me is I had really picked it up so fast that they wanted to uh, give me a promotion, keep me there longer, make, you know, make sure that I was happy and satisfied in my job. Um, but I had really high, by that time, once I started really getting into that job, I started realizing um, kind of the job market. I started realizing how much I probably could be worth, um, which at that time I was making $63,000, right? Um, at the nonprofit, I was making 47000 as the data collection specialist and analyst. Um, I was making like thirty two or something like that, um, maybe thirty six as the... Uh, Caretaker, so you know, I'm making a steady, steady pro progression in my salary, which is amazing. Because at that time, when I got in the KP, uh, when I got in the healthcare analytics job, I had just gotten married, so I was a newlywed. Um, we just, you know, we had a, <laughs> we found out my wife was pregnant, not but what three months after we had gotten married. So I mean, my life is like fast tracking right now. And I'm under, I, I had put myself under an immense amount of pressure to really provide for my family because I knew we were about to add a child. Um, we were about to enter a whole new stage of our lives. And I felt a huge amount of pressure to really start making more money. And so I started reaching around um, and eventually I got reached out to um, by another recruiter who basically said, you have all the skills that we're looking for for this position. Um, excuse me. It's a big Fortune 500 company, lots of great perks, benefits, but it's a junior data analyst position. Um, but it paid more than what I was currently making, right? It was the, I believe it was 76,000, but it was um, an hourly job, it was a contract to hire. Um, and I was really, really nervous, right? And I, I basically told my wife, I was like, what, what do you, I, I asked my wife, what do you want me to do? Right, do you want me to stay at my current job and then in a year or two I get um, a promotion, make a little bit more money? Or do I try to make it up into what I would consider like the big leagues is how I remember phrasing it. <laughs> I feel kind of stupid saying that. Um, but I, I remember telling her, I was like, I was like, this is the big leagues. I was like, this is a, this is a big company. This is a, um, you know, a, a, a global company. I was, like, I was like, if I got that job, I mean, that could be huge for my career. And it turns out it really was, but you know, at the time it was very much, um, very much scary. It was very scary to, um, to try to switch jobs, right? Um, to back it up just real quick before I tell you what I did there, to back that up during, you know, while I was at this healthcare analytics company, I was also learning a ton um, in my spare time. I was learning Python, Tableau, Power BI, um, and we we use Tableau at the job, and so I finally at near near maybe like the six month mark at that at that job I started to use it, but we didn't use any Python um, at least for my position. We didn't use any Power BI, and so I was just learning those things 100% on my own, figuring out how to automate things, data visualization in Python, those kinds of things, and I did that for months. I'm, I mean, probably like six months, um, and Python to me was just another language. It was like it was like I had been dropped in another country and they were expecting me to speak their language or else they would not understand me. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what an IDE was, a, a terminal, like the beginner stuff that you just start out with. Didn't understand it 
in the slightest. And it took me months to just understand the very basics because I was just so new new to the to that idea. I didn't know what a, co a programming language was. Like, I was really, I was very beginner, guys. I was very, very, very beginner. So, um, you know, just wanted to kind of step back and tell you that because I, I never saw, I still don't, and I, I have never stopped learning since I became a data analyst. I didn't get my first job and just stop learning, try to learn on the job. As I was learning on the job, I was always taking tons of courses. Um, and, and again, semi-obsessively, um, just continuing to grow my skill set because I knew the more skills that I knew, if I knew Python, I knew it would increase my value in the market. I just knew that. And that's how I thought of these things is the more I'm studying, the more I'm increasing my value um, and the more money I can make. That is 100% where my head was at. Um, and so back to the to the actual job is I got the interview. I went through three levels of interviews um, and you know they, they extended an offer and I had to choose, do I want to be a junior data analyst at a very large company or do I wanna be a data analyst right now but most likely get promoted to senior level data analyst. And you know, they were, they, I remember them when I was, one second. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Uh, I thought, uh, or I remember them talking, you know, we were looking for somebody to take your boss's role eventually, which he was a director level. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, it's too early to talk about. And eventually here's why I made the decision to go to the larger company. I felt that at the time, they wanted me at the small company to progress to a really high level quickly. They wanted someone to come in and probably within a year or two become to that direct director level. And I would have been making a lot of money, right? When I left, when I eventually took the other job and I left, before I left, they were offering me $100,000 to stay. They said, we will give you a salary of $100,000. And it was near, I mean, it took everything in me to have to turn that down. But the reason I turned that down is because the, you know, I discussed all this with my wife in depth for hours because it was such a difficult decision. But I eventually said, I want to go to the large company because I want not only the brand name, but I want the experience. And I felt like if I took the higher role at the small company, I would eventually, um, with my education, with my skill level, I would eventually, if that company had ever gone under or they went out of business or you know, those are the same thing, but if they got sold out and I had to look for another job and I have director level on my, on my resume and I have a degree in recreational therapy, I have three years of experience, who is gonna hire me? That was a huge fear for me. Um, and I told them, that. I said, look, I was like, I'm thinking long-term, I'm thinking five, 10, 15 years down the road. That to me does not look good. Um, and I understand their, and you know, they, their, their thinking was, well, you'll have a director level role very young. And I was like, I get it, but I don't see how that is gonna be beneficial to me in the long run of my career. And so I made a very difficult decision to take 76,000 hourly with the opportunity to um, you know, get promoted or the opportunity to go full-time. That was the fear, the, you know, I, that I would get the part-time work and I wouldn't get the full-time work and I would have missed out on this huge opportunity to make $100,000 right away. But I took the other job because I wanted the stability. I wanted to be a very large company, to grow at that company, to have that brand name. And um, I made the right decision. I really did. I, I really think in retrospect, looking back, I made the right decision. So... Um, I start the job. I am a junior data analyst. I took a a level down in title, so I went from data analyst to junior data analyst. So um, you know that was kind of interesting. Um, I'm making seventy six thousand um, dollars, and that's hourly. I think that's like thirty five dollars an hour um, in the U.S. And so um, it's a it's a amazing salary. I you know to be honest, I I don't come from money. I don't come from people who made a lot of money. Nobody in my family is super wealthy. Um, it, you know, to say, to, 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 you know, put it nicely, we're just not, are we, that's not how I grew up. And so to call my family and tell them that how much I was making, which my family is very open about that stuff. You know, we would just talk about it. And, you know, I knew how much, you know, my parents were making to, to tell them how much I was making. It just, it was, 
Um, I was I had an extreme amount of pride to provide that for my family, and to be able to tell my family that I'm I'm successful and that I, even though I had changed careers, I'm, I'm I am successful and it just meant everything to them. Um, and so I just continued to push myself during that time. Um, I got into the job. I got I did all the onboarding, all the trainings, and all that stuff. And you know, we are using SQL Server. That's my bread and butter. That is my that is my one thing that if I anything fails, if anyone asks me, you know, what's the best thing you're at? SQL Server. That is my thing. Um, I love it. I think it's amazing. I still stand by it to this day that it is fantastic and you should learn it. Um, and I had been learning Python, so I knew I knew quite a bit of, uh, of Python as well. So I get into my role and, um, you know, I think I had a little bit of anxiety that I was going to after I think it was a six month contract to hire. No, 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 it was a four month contract to hire. So I had a real, a very, very healthy, I feel healthy amount of anxiety that after four months they were not gonna hire me on. And so I worked um, extremely hard, like extremely, extremely hard to pick up all the work that my boss needed me to pick up, to do extra work, to, to volunteer for projects that people probably did not wanna be on. Um, and it eventually paid off for me, right? I was, I was doing things almost beyond my skill level at the time. I was building things for, that were saving my department lots of time. I'm saving my team lots of time. And like, just for example, um, cause I've talked about this in another video, um, but two things that when I got into this position, I was in my mind, I was trying to do was how can I make myself very important? And how can I make the biggest impact on the company, right? Or in my, in my team? Because I want to optimize my value here to make sure I get hired on. I don't, want, I don't want any doubt in their minds that they should not hire me and, and just bring me on full time so that I have a stable career. Um, again, that is my mindset the whole time I'm there. Uh, and maybe not the best mindset to have. Um, maybe I should have been, one sec. Maybe I should have been a little bit more concentrated on, I don't know, other things. Maybe people, the people there or my family or I don't know. I was, of course, concentrated on my family the whole time. But when I was at work, I was very much focused um, and, and I just worked and worked and worked. The two projects I was referencing were um, in SQL Server. Um, something my team was doing was doing gap analysis on, uh, on different databases because we would take a database, we'd get some new data, you know, we, we would want to do another, um, a comparison to the new database, the new data, see what's changed. And uh, my team, it, they didn't have any tools or anything that was doing that. So people were doing this manually. And when I first got there, I had to do it manually. And it took forever. It was taking hours. I'm, I'm like like a whole day worth just to do one gap analysis on a database. And I was like, there has got to be a better way. And so I, uh, without even asking my boss, I took the time out of my uh, time at home. So I, you know, I said, how can I make this quicker? So I did tons of research, played around with tons of different scripts, and I wrote a script that would take a whole database Compare it to another database, it would, it would compare every view, every table, every column, the counts of the columns, everything. And it would give us the output and it would take like five minutes to run. And I, I, I said, hey boss, um, you know, I made this thing, it might really be helpful for the team, mind if I pitch it to you? So I showed it to her and um, one thing about my boss now that I know is she's not super technical. She is extremely smart on, um, She's extremely smart on the uh, domain side. So we work in pharmaceuticals, so she knows oncology, hematology, all those things like the back of her hand. You know, She knows how to build an EMR system. She's, a, she's extremely smart. But when it came to the technical stuff, you know, she just didn't have, she wasn't a technical person. Um, but she, and that's why she was in a manager's role and she had me underneath as the data analyst. Um, and before that, she had another data analyst who had to leave. Um, and so she really needed somebody who had technical skills. And she was just floored. She thought it was the best thing that has ever happened. Um, and she made me feel that way. She made me feel like it was the best thing ever. So I really, you know, she was just a, she is a really good boss. Um, and, you know, 
we started using it. I showed other people it. I, I gave the script to other people. They modified it, used it for their own uses. So that was the first big project where I felt extremely validated that uh, you know I could hang with these people, that um, that I could you know really be successful here. And I say that because when I first got there, I felt um, a little bit of um, imposter syndrome, uh, very much like everyone else was smarter than me, um, which I still think they are um, in, in a lot of different aspects. But there were some aspects that I started to hold on to, and I started to say, well, you know, I, I really can hold my own in this area. And so I started to gain a lot of confidence. Um, and then eventually I built a Python script that um, another thing that we were, you know, I was, I was trying to solve business business issues, um, things that were taking us a lot of manual time. And something that we were doing was we were getting flat files from customers where we needed to look into it, kind of analyze it um, a little bit, get some basic information. And what my team was originally doing was taking it, converting it to an Excel, running counts on the, on the columns and all these things and, and a few different other things. And I was like, wait a second. I was like, this is a perfect opportunity to use my Python skills that I've been working on for the past four months. Um, so I build a script that uh, when, when the file was put into uh, this folder, it would ingest it, spit out um, all of the things that we were looking for. Um, so it, it would spit out counts, nulls, all these things. And then it would uh, create a file and it would send us an email and say it's done. And again, I, I think that one was probably one of the most challenging um, things that I had basically ever done um, or projects that I ever done to date. Um, but uh, to me, that was, that was the really big project that I think put it over the edge um, for what came next. So, you know, my, my four months are up. They're, they're wondering, um, they're looking into, one second, sorry about that. They're looking into hire me again. Um, one sec, I, uh, I need to show you guys something really quick. And I'm completely cutting myself off mid-sentence because I'm getting distracted by it. So if I don't show you now, um, I'm just gonna completely forget everything else I'm gonna say. So one second. We just got a puppy and his name is Max. Uh, this is a perfect time near the end of the podcast to say, or near the end of the show to say that um, today's sponsor is all of you guys over at Patreon. And if you wanna see more pictures of Max, um, you know, you need to go to Patreon and support the channel. And if you, uh, if you really care about Max, if you really care about feeding him, taking care of him, making sure that uh, he is loved, the only way I'm gonna do that is if you go over to Patreon and support me. So thank you. Ooh, cute dog. He is um, a doxy poo. Very cute dog um, for the family. I wanted uh, a golden lab. Didn't happen. I'm not surprised. I have little, little kids. And so I was outvoted. Um, where was I? Uh, so I'm just going to pick off where I think I was, but I may not be exactly where I actually was. You know, they were contemplating, uh, how they were going to hire me. Uh, if they wanted to hire me, I basically got the go ahead from my boss. Like, yes, we're going to offer you the job. So, you know, we get into talks about promotions, uh, or, or hiring me on full time. And my boss basically springs this on me is like, Hey, you know, I, I talked to the higher ups. Um, I talked to our internal team who does the hiring and we want to offer you a data analyst two position, which was two pos pay positions higher than you, I was already at. Um, and so I just remember being absolutely floored. Like I was absolutely just floored, um, that they were going to do that because they could have easily just offered me the junior data analyst position for like 75,000 full time um, or se mid 70s full time. And I would have accepted it. No question. But they, you know, just said that I went above and beyond. My people skills were really good. I was connecting with all, everyone on the team. Um, you know, my technical skills were really good. And so they offered me a, a promotion basically. And um, to say the least, I was, it, it just, it made me feel um, so validated 
that my decision was correct to not take the other job, but to take this one, because eventually the, the pay was comparable to what they were offering me at the other job, but now I have um, this really uh, good company, brand name, uh, giant company on my resume, and that will do me wonders down the road. I, I know it will, um, and I and that's because now I'm in on the, on the hiring side, because um, now I work um, on, on the hiring team for our team. I know that that will pay dividends down the road, and so I'm super happy that I made that decision. Um, it just you know it took uh, it took a while to to put everything into perspective, but all that to say is. Um, you know, I think that for everyone out there who is trying to change careers, um, there are a few main tips that I, that I will give you, which is make sure that you know the skills really well, the ones that you really need to know. Um, SQL, Python, Tableau, Power BI, Excel, the, the basics, make sure you know those really well. Make sure that you have a really good resume and you can speak to your skills very well in an interview. Work with a recruiter, make sure that um, you know, the recruiter knows what you're looking for, that you're working with many recruiters, um, and that, you know, when you get into that interview, that you sell yourself hard. You sell yourself, you make sure you get that job because you need that experience. You need an experience underneath your belt uh, to, to progress and, and go higher and make more money. You, you have to have it. And so that is in a nutshell, in a very quick nutshell, that is, you know, that is the that is the takeaway from all of this. It is possible to change careers. It is difficult, and I had a very tough time getting that first job. But once I got that first job, um, once I got that first real job, not the data analytics analyst co collection and analyst, whatever that job was, not that job. My very first real one at a healthcare analytics company. Once you get that real experience with with the skills and you actually are using it. It is invaluable. It will make it 10 times easier to get your next job, I promise. And so for all of you who are who are in that spot where I was just a few years ago, there is hope. Um, it may be a little bit more difficult now that there is COVID, but I promise you there are jobs out there. You just have to keep, um, keep focused, know what you need to do, and just do it consistently all the time. Um, so if you're studying, cons consistently study. You don't have to study it all in one month, right? Make sure you're just doing it consistently and it will pay off. Um, we have a segment at the end of the show, which is the question of the week. And let me pull that one up. Uh, is from Nick um, on YouTube and he says, hello, Alex, how are you? And that meant a lot. I don't get questions asking how I am very often on YouTube. It's, it's always... Alex, help me out with this. Alex, how do I do this? Alex, my code isn't working. What do I do? You know, it's all the time. It's just, um, it's nice to hear that Nick cares about me. I gotta be honest. And to answer the question, I, I'm doing really good. All things considered, um, you know, my family is healthy. Uh, I have a dog who's sleeping right here. I'm doing good. Um, and I have this YouTube channel where I get to talk to all of you guys every week. It makes me super happy. So Nick, thank you. I'm, I'm doing well. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope you and your family are healthy and safe. Um, comment below, message me. We'll get in touch. Uh, that is all I have for today. I hope this has been useful, right? I, I will say that when I was starting out, I did not have anybody, not one person um, on YouTube or in real life or anybody to guide me or mentor me in any way. I was doing this all completely by myself. Um, the videos that I watched on YouTube, I didn't feel like there was anyone that really I resonated with. Um, and so I didn't, I just completely went in blind, 100% blind. And that's why I'm making this channel. I, I'm sure a lot of you know that. Is like, that's why I started this channel is because I didn't want other people who were trying to get into this field to go through what I went through, which was I felt like I did it all by myself. I wanted, I created this channel so that I could help you guys, so that I could give advice. Um, share my story, help you, um, you know, however you want to say that, uh, you know, create your dream, make your dreams come true, uh, help you become a data analyst. That's what this is all about. I said that terribly. I said that really, really, I feel so stupid that I said, however I said that. I feel really silly that I said it that way. But that's, that's what this channel is all about. Um, and so I hope that this has been helpful. I genuinely do 
think that I got lucky. Um, although I think that it was, you know, maybe 50% luck, 50% extreme, extremely hard work because it was very difficult. Um, and just picking up those skills. So all that to say, thank you guys for watching and for sticking with me this long. I think this is a really long video. I think it's like 40 some minutes probably. Um, but if you stuck with me to now, I mean, that's impressive. You guys are my, you guys are my real, my real fans or the real dedicated people. You guys, the people who are sticking around right now, listening to my rant at the very end of my show, you guys are the people who are going to be successful data analyst. Everyone who dropped off 10, 15 minutes ago, they don't got it. They don't got it like you got it. And so if you made it this far, put a comment below that you made it this far. Uh, maybe we'll have like, um, I don't know, I'm making stuff up at this point, but like a passcode, a keyword, um, jalapenos. If you post jalapenos below, I will know that you guys are going to be successful data analysts. That's the end of the show. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I hope this is a good one. You guys have a great night. I will talk to you guys next week. Have a good one and goodbye.